For almost a century, Darianne and New Canaan have battled it out on the gridiron. And since 1994, they've met every year on Thanksgiving Day. New Canaan's won 16 of them, Darianne's won nine, and there was a tie in 2003. Folks, it's the biggest game in Connecticut. It's the Turkey Bowl, and we're ready for it. Joining you from Darien High School, I'm Dylan DeRiso alongside Braden Shank for the first edition of High School Game Day presented by DAF Media. This is the Turkey Bowl edition and we've got the big game coming up tomorrow, Braden. Excitement cannot be higher right now. Yeah, no, it really can't, Dylan. You got two of the top teams in the state. You have the number one ranked team in the state, the Darien Blue Wave, with an unblemished 9-0 record. And then on the other hand, you have the New Canaan Rams, 8-1 on the season with that sole loss to a uh, last second field goal to the Wilton Warriors. So it should be a really good one tomorrow. It should be. This year's edition of the Turkey Bowl is going to be held at Dunning Field in New Canaan, one of the best atmospheres for high school football in the state. Yeah, location is a big part of any game, and it's going to be a sold-out stadium. Both teams have been preparing for this one for a while, and it's the first time it's at Dunning Field since 2016, so some extra anticipation to the uh, location, but it definitely plays a big part, home field advantage. Definitely, for sure. Now, Braden, let's look back at the 2019 Turkey Bowl, which was held here at Darien High School. Darien was coming into that game 9-0. New Canaan was 7-2, but those records did not mean a thing, and the Rams dominated from the jump. They were led by quarterback Drew Pine, who's now at Notre Dame. Look, Dylan, New Canaan clearly wanted it more that day, and usually in the Turkey Bowl, that's what it comes down to. The Blue Wave were the better team on paper coming into it, but the games aren't played on paper. Uh, New Canaan came out and proved they were really the, uh, the better team that day, and they shut out Darien 20 to nothing. No doubt many of the Darien players will still have that game in the back of their minds, despite most of them not playing in that one. So we're gonna take a quick break here. We'll be back in just a moment on the DAF Media Network. Of course, the Darien New Canaan game isn't the only game being played on Thanksgiving Day. So, Braden, let's take a look at some of the others. Yeah, the uh, first big game we have is the Battle of Norwalk being played at Norwalk High School. The Norwalk Bears are taking on the Brian McMahon Senators. Uh, that's a game that Norwalk should win. They have their star running back, Cam Edwards. Um, it should be a good game, though, to say the least. And if you go to the other side of Darien, you have the Stanford Black Knights and the West Hill Vikings being played at Boyle Stadium. Uh, the Battle of Stanford, another crosstown. Uh, rivalry both teams are winless so one of those teams will be picking up their first victory in Stanford. Of course Thanksgiving Day games always mean a lot more to players so you can definitely be expecting the best out of the Vikings and the Knights. Yeah you definitely can and that's just the start of these great games. You go over to Greenwich and Greenwich will take on Staples at Greenwich. Uh, two very good teams in that annual turkey matchup. Greenwich is coming in six and three. The Staples records looking good at seven and two. Overall, should be, just should be a really good game. For sure. And then you go over a little bit to Danbury, and you have the Danbury Hatters playing their annual Thanksgiving game against the Richfield Tigers. Another good game. That game is Wednesday night at 6 o'clock. Uh, so not on Thanksgiving, but still a rivalry yeah. game. Uh, one of our last games, the Battle of Fairfield. The Fairfield Ward Mustangs and the Fairfield Ludlow Falcons. Another annual rivalry. That game being played at Fairfield Ward this year. And two teams that you know really struggled this year but are very solid. Um, and our final game you can't forget about. One of the best ones, the Battle of Trumbull. The St. Joe's Hogs and the Trumbull Golden Eagles. Uh, Trumbull needs a win to make that playoff push. And St. Joe's a win would clinch them home field advantage in the Class L playoffs. So overall, really good games here in Thanksgiving. It should be a real fun morning in southwestern Connecticut, and a lot of the games have pretty big implications as well. Before we talk about some of the key players on both of the teams, we interviewed some of the players, so let's see what they had to say about the Turkey Bowl. Yeah, uh, obviously we've been watching it since we were kids, elementary school, middle school, all the way, and we've got a lot of memories just from watching it. Now that we get the chance to play, it's it's honestly a dream come true for a lot of us. I've grown up, I've gone to like every Turkey Bowl I could basically, and I've always always dreamt of playing it. I've seen 
like all these older kids that we always looked up to playing in it. And I've always talked about it with our friends and it's such a cool opportunity just to be able to play in the game. Finally be able to play in this game, um, it's surreal. And uh, especially after um, missing last year's season, you know, this is something we've been uh, looking forward to for forever. Looking around, it was just insane. And I'm just excited that my senior year, it's home. We get to play in front of the home team and like home crowd and just uh, get after it. I think the game's going to be an unbelievable atmosphere. Uh, lots of fans. Definitely um, should be a great, great experience for all of us. I think it's going to be a great atmosphere. Obviously, not having a you know Turkey Bowl last year, I think people are just ready to be able to watch this game and you know really enjoy it. And I think we're all ready. We're all ready for it. You know, it's, we know it's going to be loud. We know we're going to have to you know calm down a little bit before the first snap of the game, but we'll be ready to go. How do you so let's talk about the offenses first. Darianne has looked really good so far this season on offense. Their striking passing game, their power run. And then we've also got New Canaan too, and they're looking really solid as well. Yeah, it should be an offensive day at Dunning Field. First starting with the Darianne Blue Wave. Their rushing game has been pretty much unstoppable. You have Ty Kamiski, who has rushed for 100 plus yards in the last six games. And they're gonna throw the ball with Miles Drake, who has 23 passing touchdowns on the season. He's gonna go to his favorite targets and Matthew Menikis and Junior Jake Wilson. They've been such a dynamic duo. How about New Canaan? New Canaan, same thing, dynamic uh, offense. They have the running game, Vin Cognetta. Great season. They have the quarterback, Henry Cunney, with 12 touchdowns on the season. New Canaan has a very deep core at wide receiver, led by uh, Andrew Rechterman. They have Max Salert, and you've got to look out for sophomore Alex Benevento. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sophomore, he's coming up quick. Let's talk about the defenses. Let's not forget about them, because these defenses for both these teams have had excellent seasons. Yeah, first one starting over on New Canaan this time. A player to watch, Army commit Ned Brady. He leads a uh, whole defense of disruptors featuring uh, Chad Russo, the linebacker, with 11 sacks on the season. And you can't forget about the two-way star player, running back linebacker, Vin Cognetta. Yeah, I mean, Ned Brady, Division One commit, that's a guy you got to be scared of. So let's talk about Darian's defense now. Yeah, Darian, they also have a uh, talented core. You have David Vancheck, of course, a long line of Vanchecks. He's going to be leading the D-line. D-line strong. You have uh, Jack Barber. You have Cole Murphy. Uh, and you can't forget about their secondary with Christian Allegro, Joe Caesar, and the recent Trinity football commit, Alec Medwar. Great, great lineups on both sides of the teams. There's, there's a reason that Darian's ranked number one in the state. New Canaan's ranked number three. So, of course, there is more than just players on the field. There, there's the sidelines. There's the coaching. So we sent Peter McLean to talk to the uh, head coaches uh, for both of the teams. So let's see what they had to say about the game. For the first time in 14 years, the Darien Blue Wave will take the field behind someone other than Rob Drafone. It's Mike Forget's first season at the helm for the Blue Wave. On the other sideline, Lou Marinelli brings plenty of experience into this one, this being his 40th season atop the New Canaan coaching staff. We had a chance to sit down with both coaches earlier in the week. This game is really what's good about high school football. It's all it's good about. It's two, two towns, rival towns. They can't wait to play us. We can't wait to play them. The communities really get into it. This place will be packed. It is, it is just so exciting. I know there are times when I speak at a clinic or something like that, and I show the film, and they see the crowd. And they, where, where, where do you coach, Texas? Uh, and and it's, so much, it's so much fun. It's an incredible atmosphere. It's an incredible game. Uh, you know, for seven to 10,000 people to come out and watch a football game in the state of Connecticut, that's, a, that's an outstanding thing because it, it really doesn't happen a whole lot in this state. And uh, it's a great rivalry and two great teams that are well coached. I, I think as a first year head coach being in this game, I, I, I think, you know, it, it's exciting. Even though it's Forge's first year as the Blue Wave head coach, he's not new to the spotlight. He spent eight years as Rob Trafone's assistant. Back to you guys. So the coaches bring that same intensity, same desire to win as the players. Mike Forge looking to begin his Turkey Bowl legacy as Darian head coach and Lou Marinelli looking to just continue his incredible legacy. With that brings us to the conclusion of the first edition of High School Game Day with DAF Media. For Braden Shank, I'm Dylan DeRiso. We'd like to thank you all very much for watching and have a good evening.